Hi, good evening and welcome once again to the Purdy Factory. Uh, my name is Everett, Tom Nichols, Transformation Manager and Senior Craftsman for James Purdy & Sons. Um, welcome tonight to the fifth, uh, well it's actually the fourth instalment, but the fifth stage of gun making. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking about ejector work, um, specifically side by side ejector work, with the Service and Repair Manager and Senior Craftsman, James yeah. Bryan, who's in the run us through the history um, and the actual build process showing us how it works at the very end. So uh, welcome, hope you enjoy. Um, feel free to ask any questions as we go along and we'll try and answer them, we can't promise. Um, and yeah, enjoy. Jim. Jim Bryan. <laughs> you met him last time. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, on. over um, to you Jim. Yeah, so this is sub side ejector work. We would, um, normally go through o OUs and sub sides, sorry, over and unders, um, but we haven't got all night. So we're going to go through all the cyber side stuff. Um, this isn't, uh, this is for the purists, uh, this, isn't, um, this isn't finishing or uh, engraving or anything <laughs> quite ex ex it's, exciting it's as that, very but, but it is essential for a cyber side, uh, for, for cyber side, the cyber side build. So what I've got here is, some old and new components um, that we've used before. Okay, so this is very, very old and the very old casting of what we uh, use, used to use. You can see that. And this, in contrast, is basically what we, what we use now. Okay, so you can see a vast difference in, in the two. As with things like these ejector rods, which basically three stages here so and a, and a finished one if you can see that okay so that's an, a regulated one already that's what we get now and that's what we used to get okay a lot of machining goes into this obviously and then now we've got this which is very more lean to to use okay so when um you've seen a lot of skill based stuff going on this is no this is no different when we're going through locks and stuff like that when we're fitting components um, there's a lot of filing a lot of hand work going on to fit these components um, they need to be like that to work um, perfectly we have jigs like this that we make by hand so this is actually I'll go through I'll go through the components and actually tell you what they are first it might be a little bit more easier so if you come around here so we have well, we have cams, which a lot of people call kickers. We have front lifters, which I'll go, that, that's to do with the cocking work, which we also build. A lot of, um, some other makers actually buy ejector work in as a block sort of thing. We, we make everything, all the components. So we've got, these are, these are side springs, main, main springs. Um, and the most essential bit of our side by side build is a, center arm. Um, this, this gives a lot of feel through the gun and uh, allows the components not to wear as quickly as, as they have done previously. So if you can see this here, so we have that and that, so the finished article and how we, how we build it. Now there's a lot of regulating going on within that from front to back, you know, um, and I'll get, I'll get into that later on. Um, so let's Start. So, like I said, we make our tools, and as we spoke about before in other 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 talks. So I made we, I made this jig. You can see that. Um, that it literally all it does is it holds the can. That's all it does when I'm filing it. So can you see that? So it goes in there. That's all it does. That 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 actual jig. That's all, the, all it does, it has no other purpose than that. Um, but it is vital for what we do. Okay, it holds it in very, various different ways and all the different areas that we have to file. So, you know. Um, so we'll start with the cam and um, all the kicker. So we, we have different terminology with certain things. So for Extractors, a lot of people call them extractors, we call them luggers. Um, like I said, cams are kickers. Um, and when, when I'm talking through it, hopefully that will translate 
and, and, and hopefully you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, I have a few examples of, very, of stages through the gun uh, that, that, I will, that I will show. Okay, so if I grab this here. Now what I have here is a forend with just the cams in them. Okay, so as I, you haven't actually seen the finished article of, of the cam and the difference between it. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll just get them out quickly so you can actually see what they look like in comparison to what, what, they, uh, what the original looks, what, what they come through the, the stores looking at. So <clears throat> I might be jumping around here, but it's not, it's not too, too fluid, but essentially when we get the fore end, we will clean that up. This isn't, this isn't the finished article, as a, you, you know, that's the finished article there. Um, you, you do have to you know, polish everything up and make sure it's a, a, an even surface for us to fit the components to, much like locks, action in, and all this sort of, sort of stuff. So, um, so yeah, so if I just show you the difference in the cam to what we have. So if I get my, if I get my pointer, so the regulating points of this, and I'll come back to this later on, but the regulating points on this is there, 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 and there. Everywhere. Okay, basically everywhere. <laughs> yeah. You know, any component, any, any surface you can see is basically a regulating component. <laughs> <laughs> you have to know what you're doing with these. If you get it wrong, you, you're in a world of hurt, and uh, you know, you learn a lot from a your mistakes. Of yeah. <laughs> so, like I said, when we're fitting these up, that foreign back. And we'll start as a pair. Get them like this. And we'll put them on the mill and give a slot for the center arm to go into. And I'll, I'll show this later on. And also, we'll come into doing a bit of filing. <laughs> So at this point, it's all about filing and getting, uh, getting your even surfaces. Uh, let me just actually use the other one because it's not a good angle for the pictures for the photo. So, this is all it is, filing, filing flat, and trying to get a, a nice, a nice even surface over it, so we can match up the surface within the fore end. Now, because this rotates, as we showed earlier, because this rotates in the fore end itself, to what we do is we like to give a boss, what we call a boss, just around the pinhole, just around here. And how we do that is is a, a jig that just sits over the top there, and then we polish this area which gives a difference of about half a thousandth of an inch. Um, and that's enough to relieve this and just hold on there so it gives a nice rotation. But it also gives a, lot, a nice fit. So we do that on, on both and then, uh, where are we? And <clears throat> so then they fit, is, is that right? You can see that? Mm -hmm. Just in the gap there. And I'll put the pin through. And then what, I'll, what I can show you, while these cams are the way they are, I can show you primary extraction, which is essentially, it's the, um, the movement of the extractor or luggers before it's fired. So enabling anyone to get the cartridge out, um, uh, an unfired cartridge with their fingernail or finger, just so, you know, it's just easy access. <coughs> Can you get me uh, yeah, no, corks? Oh no, actually I don't need them at the moment. Right, so, just with the cams in at the moment, just with them on their, on their own, I've got one lock in for to explain a little bit something else later, but when you rotate this, you can see, can you see the rotation of the cam? 
Okay, so that cam is rotating there. Yeah, as that rotates, that can actually, you can see the, the, the extractor lifting. So, can you see that? Okay, that gives you primary extraction, allowing it to lift. That is also very essential when it comes down to the throw of the gun and the travel of the extractors. Okay, so I'm gonna tie that up. I'm gonna just take that off. You want me to do that again? Okay, as it comes around. Now this motion here, what I'm gonna put on next is the main springs. Just the V springs that I'll show you in a second. But these are the firing points of the cams. Now there's a lot a lot going on here with the, the run of the cam up and down here and the firing points. It's literally within a thousandth of an inch. You get, and these have got to be the same, as have the bottom legs of these mainsprings. So fit is essential. So let me just put in a mainspring, which I have prepared. <laughs> as Tom showed before, we all have our own <laughs> cans, our own, uh, own clamps. And just for everyone's, these are 28 years old and they're still working. A lot better than my knees, I like having you know. <laughs> so I'm just gonna compress these cams. Okay. So now what you can see is you can see uh, the mainspring, the ejector mainspring, and the cam all in a five, ready for five position. Okay. So I'm going to do this again, and you'll see the rotation of the can. Then, with any luck, it should fire. So, so as the can rotates, there we go. So you can see that. Okay. All right. So there we go. You want it again? Just there we go. Now, where when projectors fire, it has to be in a very a certain position. So this is where regulating comes in in in, in later on in the build. Um, when I try and build my ejectors, I try and incorporate in, uh, regulating into it. It's just a lot easier that way. I find it quite easy. But there are certain places where the ejectors have to be. Ejectors are very visual. And believe me, customers will tell you when ejectors aren't working. Um, and when they're out of time. So the key thing for ejectors is it, for it to be after the cocking of the lock. So once, it, once, the, uh, once the lock has cocked, it then has to eject. And then it has to have full rotation of the barrel down to the bottom of the down to the bottom of the drop of the action. So if I just open it, yeah. Oh, sorry. I'll fire it. It. it I'll put the, the lock into firing. I'll show you how I've done that. So if I just push them up, rotate the tumbler. So that now is in the tumbler. You see that is in the fire position. This here I'll talk about in a minute is it's the ejector rod, which I also have to build. And it's essentially the trip that trips the ejectors. But I'll be talking about that later. So as it, as, it, as it opens up, this interceptors here will cop, right? And this is a safety mechanism. I keep on going. And then here, can you still see it? This is where you're looking, which is the bent. And that's essentially when the gun's now cocked. So that lock needs to be cocked for it to fire again afterwards. So if I keep on going, the gun's still opening. Obviously very slow. Right, so now, now that gun's cocked, the space between this cock and the full uh, barrel's opening is where I need, to, need it to eject. So then it'll eject and then drop. So that's regulating for one side. You've got to do both sides <laughs> and get them in time uh, together. So now I'm going to show you the uh, 
what the centre arm does. Just which interrupt is, quick. Yeah, go on. Um, just want to mention that heat treatment of these parts as well. Yep. Obviously, the timing critical, yep. also on your bearing surface and stuff like that, but then the heat treat to yeah, so keep it in time. Yeah, with, um, with the cams especially, they, they have a bearing surface. They also have surfaces that need to be a little bit more palatable to a lot of movement. So um, you have to have them uh, tempered in a different way. They're, they're not just tempered one, um, sorry, tempered uh, all over. So they'll be soft in areas and they'll be harder in other areas. So the run of the cam will be harder and it'll be more, uh, it'll be better to work with the surface of the bottom leg of the mainspring. Um, in order to keep the timing. If, when, when we build stuff and it's all done soft, pre-heated, pre pre-hardened, pre, um, um, timing can run out so easily. Uh, so, the mechanism we use now is a, is a, a center arm mechanism, which is a south gate, a derivative of a south gate mechanism. What we used to use was a, a crossbar system, which actually, I have, if anyone out there has got one of these, it's exactly what it says on the tin. It's a crossbar that goes across there. Now this means that the cam is actually a different shape. And it means that the firing point, what we've just been talking about, actually gets double wear for every, for every fire of the gun because it literally, this component here literally pushes the cam backwards and forwards and forces the firing point of the cam backwards and forwards so it gets double wear and that's what we found that's why we changed um, to the center arm because what the center arm does and I'll show you now is it lifts the uh, mainsprings out of the way of the cams so once they're fired and the cams fully rotated the with the movement of the gun and the, at the bottom of the action the centre arm will lift both mainsprings out of the way and allow the cams to rotate on their own. So they just get one single wear going forward and on the way back they get nothing. They just get a rotation with the, with the extractor. Uh, let me just put this in. These are a little bit tricky. Okay, so see this block here, yeah, and then you've got the nose of the center arm that works here. Now this works off of the action, and the timing is a lot is regulated through that, and the lift is regulated through that, the lift of the center arm and the uh, the mainsprings. So as as the the action comes down and lifts it up. That's what the blocks then lift the, the mainsprings. I'll try and put this on the gun and, and show you. Okay, did you get that? Oh, So this is what we're looking at here. So that's fired. And what that's gonna do now, as that moves up, can you see the movement of that as I'm moving that back? That is actually lifting the bottom limb, I'll show you on the other side, which allows the extractor to be pushed from the face on its own, on its own weight. So you don't have to push you're not pushing the mechanism back through the face, which damages the face. So let me try and do that. Let me do that again. Try and do it again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you look at the extractor, if you can try and get in line with the extractor, and I'll, what I'll do is I'll push it back so you can see the gap consistent. And this is what the centre arm is doing. See, it's actually coming in and it clears completely. And this, this this here, even though they're small components and they're doing a lot of movement, the feel of the gun is essential. And this is what these small components do. 
they make the, 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 the feel of the gun feel a lot more smoother um, when they're regulated properly. Um, and as I said before, if you, get, if you start regulating them and they fall out, yeah, there's, a, there's a long way back. So <clears throat> what I'm going to show now is uh, I'll put what I'll do is I'll put the other mainspring in and I'll show you the, um, the ejector rod and how that works. Let me just put the mainspring in the, center, in the side springs. Any questions, Tom? No? No, 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 no questions. No. Fantastic. You did such a good job, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. That's right. <laughs> Now what I will say is, <clears throat> there's a, well and I've seen this before, when you black four ends, a lot of people can pre compress kickers or cams with either copper or steel. Best thing to do is do it with, with wood if you're gonna do it at all. Because if you slip, you're re-blacking everything. Okay, just a bit of advice. So these, <clears throat> these are side springs, they determine uh, where the gun, when the gun fires and when it doesn't, there is a, uh, there's a component called uh, the ejector rod, which connects the lock to the ejectors. And when the, when the lock is fired, that's when the gun will fire. And obviously when it's not, that's when it doesn't fire. But this, all of this, we call this the diamond. And all of that is a regulating point, including the length of the rod and the, the width of the end of the rod, they're all finite measurements. <clears throat> Let me just put this in. So, what we have is a side spring in. It's, it just goes underneath, underneath the mainspring to stop it from firing, because as the cam rotates, the, the mainspring is gonna open up and then it's gonna want to fire off the, off the firing point. Let me just get a proper pointer. Off the firing point through here. The side spring stops that from happening purely because that's sat underneath the spring. Now. When the rod comes forward, it pushes this out into this void here where you can see, which is another regulating point, which is uh, it's like a half round, if you can see that. And what I'm gonna do is now, you'll be able to see the movement of it. I just, see the spring in that? So that goes back and forwards, side to side. Now, as with all the components, as I've been going through, every component has got its regulating points. This has also, which is called the, um, the side spring gap, which is the gap between uh, the main springs, the, the, the ejector main springs, and the side springs. Um, and like I said, if there's too much gap there, you can end up chasing yourself again. So I'm gonna put this in the gun now, and So if you'd like to come this side, so at the moment, the gun isn't gonna fire on the right hand side. That's the left, <laughs> just to let you know. <laughs> right. So what I'm gonna show you is, because that's, that's the underneath the logo, the, what I'm wanting you to focus on is, where's my pointer gone? Oh. Is this here, 
which is the diamond of the rod which I was talking about earlier. Now you can see the motion of the tumbler, which is also there, which is called the turret. Okay, so let me do that again. So there, see it moving back and forwards. So when it goes in, that has actually moved out of, moved the, the side spring out, which means it will now fire, which they are both now doing. So if I turn it over, I don't, you, I don't think you'll see much. You'll just see, probably see the, the side spring move out as it gets fired. But as you can see there, if you come round, as it's fired, the, um, the side spring is actually sitting on top of the main spring. As I close it, the main spring gets compressed by, well, actually get, gets compressed by the centre arm, moves up the bottom limb, just there. And then if you turn your volume up, you might hear a click. There we go. That's perfect. That was, that was all right, wasn't it? <laughs> Should we do that again? I quite like that. Right. So let's try that again. Okay. All right, that's fired. We'll do that again. Now we're just closing the gun. There we go, it's under. Okay, so now when you open it up, because that's been that's that's now sat back underneath the, ma the mainspring, and the clock, the lock's not fired. When you open the gun up, doesn't fire. That's the that's the other side because it hasn't got the side spring in it. So yeah, that's um, that's what the uh, the injectors do, and that's how they work. Um, we can go on to. Uh, briefly about the cocking. Most of it will go, uh, be told, spoke about in the finishing side of things with the regulating. But we have uh, a front lifter, which is made like that. And this is what we build as an ejector man. Uh, we build this up so it can be then regulated fin finally by the finishers, but that's another regulating point and regulating point and that pivots around the cross pin of the action. And this component is what gives you the, uh, the self-opening mechanism. So these, these surfaces are essential. Um, and when they're doubled up with the main springs in the locks, it helps the barrels drop, drop a lot nicer and that's what gives you the feel of a purdy side side. But I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'll, get, I'll, let the, um, I'll let the finishers talk about that more in depth. And, uh, that's about it, really. Yeah, so there you go. Excellent. Thank you very much, Jim. Okay. Uh, very nice to explain and uh, very well done. Um, thank you very much for joining us again this evening. Um, if there are any more questions, um, this video will go up on our uh, bio. IGTV. IGTV. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, after this uh, live is finished, um, so there's a comment section under that. Any questions you've got, uh, please feel free to ask in there, uh, or us or the team will um, get back to you and answer any. Stopping it, it? Yeah. Uh, next up in the uh, in this series will be um, stocking, uh, which will be in the next couple of weeks' time. So I hope you can join us there. Um, until then, uh, stay safe and um, take care of yourselves. Good night.